before you are 10 equations or results that you probably have already seen in high school mathematics. These results seem relatively obvious, but actually takes a little bit of effort to prove using techniques in abstract algebra. Pause the video if you'd like to try to prove these results on your own, and when you're ready, we're going to look at our first claim, which says that if the integer t is an identity, then t must equal the integer 0. To prove this, let's write out the expression t plus 0. To prove results, we need to start with hypotheses, which are statements that we take to be true. In the integers, the number 0 is an identity. What that means is that when we add 0 to any number, the result remains the same. However, in this claim, we assume that t is an identity. This means if we take t and add it to any number, the result remains unchanged, which is precisely what we aimed to prove. On a similar note, if 1 plus the integer t equals the identity 0, we claim that the integer t must equal negative 1, which is called the additive inverse of 1. We're going to start with the equation 1 plus t equals 0. We're going to add negative 1 on both sides. And we could do a little bit of algebra to simplify, but what exactly are we using? We would like to shift the brackets around so that we can do some simplifications. We call this the associativity of addition. But the number negative 1 has a very specific meaning. It is the number that if we were to add it to 1 on either side, we would get the additive identity 0. But the number 0 is a very special number. It is the do-nothing number in that if you were to add it to any existing number r on either side, the result is unchanged and remains as r giving us the equation t equals to negative of 1. This helps us prove that if we have an expression 1 plus r equaling 1 plus s, we can cancel the 1s. This is known as the cancellation law. We start with the equation 1 plus r equals 1 plus s, and add negative 1 on both sides. Once again, since addition is associative, we can shift around the brackets. Since the negative of 1 is the additive inverse of 1, when you add negative 1 to 1, you will get 0. And since 0 is the additive identity, 0 plus any number remains as that number. This helps us prove that r equals to s, which means that we can apply the cancellation law for addition. The additive inverse idea actually helps us prove that the negative of the negative of 1 equals to 1. And here is the proof as to why this is the case. By definition, the negative of 1 is the inverse of 1. This means that if we add negative 1 to 1 on either side, we would recover the additive identity 0. But let's shift our perspective a little bit. This means that adding 1 to either side of negative 1 gives us the additive identity. This makes 1 the inverse of negative of 1. What that means is that the negative, which means the inverse, of negative 1 must equal 1. And the cancellation law that we saw earlier helps us prove that 0 multiplied by anything must equal 0. This might seem painfully obvious, but let's follow this line of reasoning. Since 0 is the additive identity, if we add 0 to anything, that remains unchanged. We're going to now multiply by 1 on both sides. And how do we simplify these expressions? We can bring the multiplication sign into the addition. This is known as the distributivity of multiplication over addition in the integers. For its generalizations to this mathematical object called a ring, check out the document in the description box below. On the right hand side, however, we can write any number as 0 plus the exact number, since adding by 0 doesn't change the outcome. Finally, we can apply the cancellation law by striking out the common term that we added on both sides. 
leaving us with the identity 0 times 1 equals 0. But what about multiplying a negative number by a positive number? We claim that we can pull out the negative sign. Let's consider the expression negative 2 times 3 plus 2 times 3. The distributivity property works in the reverse direction. But negative 2 and 2 are inverses of each other and would add to the number 0. From the previous property, however, we have already seen that 0 times any number, in particular 3, must equal 0. But this equation tells us that the number negative 2 times 3 is the additive inverse of the number 2 times 3. This is precisely the claim that we were trying to prove. In particular, we claim that negative of 1 times the number 3 equals the negative of 3. In other words, this is the additive inverse of 3. From the previous result, we can pull out the negative symbol from the negative of 1. And here, 1 is not just any number. 1 is a special number that if we multiplied it to any integer t, the result is unchanged and remains as t. This means that 1 is called the multiplicative identity. This means that negative of 1 times any integer t equals the negative of that integer. But fascinatingly enough, this helps us prove that a negative number times a negative number equals a positive number. We're going to first consider the expression negative of 2 times the negative of 3. From the previous results, it's not hard to see that we can shift the negative symbol from one term to another. However, from a previous result, we also have seen that the additive inverse of the additive inverse of a number equals the original number itself, which is precisely what we wanted to prove in the first place. But can we show that if a number is non-negative, then multiplying it by itself must be positive? For its generalization to an ordered ring, check out the document in the description box below. We'll start off with the following starting points. Since the integer t is non-zero, either t is bigger than zero, or zero is bigger than t. Let's first suppose that t is bigger than zero. One of the key properties of an ordered ring is that if we have two numbers that are positive, multiplying them together would give us a positive number. This actually helps us prove our result when p is positive. But suppose 0 is greater than t. In other words, t is negative. Another important property of an ordered ring is that if we were to add on both sides, the direction of the inequality remains the same. But now, on the left-hand side, since t and negative of t are inverses of each other, the left-hand side simplifies to 0. On the right-hand side, 0 plus the negative of t remains as the negative of t. So multiplying the negative of t would give us a positive number. But from a previous result, we have seen that multiplying two negatives give us a positive. This simplifies to t times t. These all help us actually prove that 1 is positive. Firstly, according to the theory of rings, the multiplicative identity 1 is not the additive identity 0. From the previous result, any non-zero number, when multiplied by itself, is positive. But 1 being the multiplicative identity, when multiplied to the number 1, remains as the number 1, which helped us prove that the number 1 is positive. These help us establish the rules of high school algebra and are applied in completing the square in the video here.